This is the ABQ Business Podcast with your host, Jason Rigby. Each week, we'll interview visionary business leaders to inspire the creative power and spirit that's in every entrepreneur. Discussing strengths, weaknesses, strategies, systems, and the problems we can all solve together for a new future for local small business. Guys, what amazing weather that we have here. If you do not live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, I'm going to tell you how bad the weather is so you don't move here. But um, just a joke, guys. But it is absolutely like like 77, 78 degrees, sunny, just absolutely beautiful. I just got back from a run to the park and just watching everybody play and having fun and, and picnicking. It, just awesome. Love it. I love this weather. Love this time of the year. You know, we've been doing this military theme and I've been doing uh, quite a bit on leadership and I want you to understand that if you really look at the systems that are in place at the military, if you really look at what's going on on a leadership level in the Army, Air Force, Marine Corps, uh, National Guard, whatever it may be. And you see this ability to take 18-year-old little punks right out of high school and put them in charge of millions of dollars worth of equipment and then say, hey, you're going to go risk your life and risk the lives of those all around you, and we're going to be successful in doing it. (laughs) The amount of training, the amount of leadership that that takes to be able to do that, think about that. It's amazing. There's a a great article by United States Army Captain Ron Roberts. It's called The 12 Principles of Modern Military Leadership. And I want to go through these. I'm I'm going to be really quick through them uh, because I want to keep your time uh, short today. I know a lot of you listen. uh, You've told me that you listen while you commute going to work. And I hope you as a leader will listen to this and then can turn around and take this um, and and use these principles right into uh, your work. Definition of leadership, field manual 6-22 under leader development. And you can get these manuals for free online. You can type in field manual 6-22 leader development. You'll get this. Listen to this definition of leadership. The process of influencing people by providing purpose, direction, and motivation to accomplish the mission and improve the organization. I'm going to say that again. The process of influencing people by providing purpose, direction, and motivation to accomplish the mission and improve the organization. Wow. That's so heavy, isn't it? Love that. How are you influencing people? How are you giving them purpose? What direction are you taking them? Are you motivating them? And then are you really truly effectively accomplishing the mission and at the same time improving your organization? So let's get into these 12 fundamental modern military leadership principles. Number one is lead from the front. Lead from the front. The motto of the U.S. Army Infantry School is this, and I love this. Oh, I love this so much. Huge words. It says this. Follow me. Think about that. (laughs) Oh, that gives me chills just thinking about it. Follow me. You know why? Because I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing as a leader, physically, mentally, spiritually. I'm operating at my maximum. I am the example of what you should be. So follow me. And it's not just follow me because I'm an example. It's follow me because I am going into battle. I am on that forward edge. I am there right next to you. You can look up and in that time of despair, guess what? You'll see me. And I'm there and I'm fighting with you. And I'm fighting for you. And the responsibility of us winning together is on me. Isn't that, a, isn't that amazing? Follow me. What a great motto. Number two, have self-confidence, not egoism. This is something that a lot of people look at when they, they think that being self-confident is ego. No, it's not. Just because you're cocky and, and you have to show this bravado, um, you, you have to make sure that you belittle people so that you can make sure that you're the top and the whole conversations are always about you and people walk around on eggshells because of you. That is ego. Self-confidence is this. Self-confidence is turning around and saying, here's the mission. Here's where we're going. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to be right there along with you. 
saying, follow me, that's self-confidence. Follow me. Let's go. If you're not willing to do this, if you're not willing to take the risk, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to let you go or you can go some other place to work or some other place to do this because the mission is too important. The mission is too important to let one person derail it. Number three is moral courage. Mark Twain said it is curious that physical courage should be so common in the world and moral courage so rare. It's amazing to me when we look at moral courage, like that time when you know you should have spoke up when you didn't. We all have those moments in our life when we look and we're like, why didn't I say something? Why didn't I do this? Why did I give in so easily? Why, why did I tell that lie? Why didn't I have the moral courage to stand up and be the leader that I should have in that moment? Tell yourself, I need to have moral courage. What does that look like? Stop bullshitting my employees. Stop lying to your friends on the golf course. What moral courage can you have? Can you actually be honest and transparent and share who you are and and the things that you're going through in your life and how you're overcoming them to others? Number four, physical courage. Physical courage. President Theodore Roosevelt, one of my favorite guys, and if you haven't read about him, he's an amazing president. He said, there were all kinds of things I was afraid of at first, ranging from grizzly bears to mean horses and gunfighters. But by acting as if I was not afraid, I gradually ceased to be afraid. I gradually ceased to be afraid because he began to act like he wasn't afraid. He began to put himself in those situations where, yes, there was fear, but guess what? I know I'm going to have two choices, to cower in fear, to respond in courage. And I am going to respond in courage. Lieutenant Adiel Murphy, he is the most decorated soldier in American history. On January 26, 1945, at Holwitzer, Germany, Murphy ordered his men to withdraw from an attack of enemy tanks and infantry. During that withdrawal, he mounted a burning tank destroyer and fired its 50 caliber machine gun for more than an hour, killing 50 Germans, stalling the attack and forcing the enemy withdrawal. Although he was even wounded, guys, he led his men in a counterattack and was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions. And they've done interviews with him, and he's, you know, I, yes, I was fearful, but I knew what I needed to do to accomplish. We need to be a role model. How many leaders out there are true role models, guys? I'm in disgust with politics. I'm in disgust on both sides of what's going on right now. We need leaders that are in the front that display courage, that motivate us to have unity and to work together and solve problems, not create problems, not create. A true leader doesn't create division for the United States. A true leader unites because we're on a mission to be great. And I'm not talking about make America great again. I'm not talking either side, guys. See, I even have to clarify that for a trigger. Or the stupid, if you don't wear a mask, you're a Trump supporter. If you have a mask on, you know, you're, you're a, a Biden supporter. Where did we come? Where are we at right now? Let's be leaders. Let's step up. Let's do what we know what we need to do to be American together. We need leadership right now. Not division, not pouty little whiny babies that are trying to get their way or have an agenda for self-service of themselves and don't even have a backbone where they can't stand up. They have to poll and do polls and then from there they decide where they want to go or what they want to do. Are they trying to appease all these different sides? You got to make decisions sometimes that are hard and you're going to piss some people off. You are, but guess what? That's what being a leader is all about. You got to have that confidence to say, guess what? I'm the leader. This is the vision. Here's the mission. Let's attack it and go. And you know what happens? You develop trust with those underneath you. That's why we don't trust our government right now. And most people don't. Do a poll. How many people truly trust politicians? And you'll find out. Number five, foster teamwork. President Harry S. Truman said, it's amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. There's no I in team. We all know that. 
we have to say and understand that the credit belongs to those that we lead. If you will give credit next time you do this, maybe your middle manager and maybe, you know, one of the upper managers come in, give credit to those that helped you with the project. Don't take the credit. Try that. Never take the credit. When you're in a meeting, maybe you are the boss in the meeting. Don't take the credit for winning. Say, I want to thank you guys for doing this, this, and this. I especially want to thank this person for helping with this and this person for doing this. You guys deserve all the credit. Thank you so much for all your hard work. It's a big difference than not saying anything and just being like, oh, we won. Next. Number six, have fitness and energy. Lieutenant General Sir Brian Horrocks said this about the German. Here's a bad guy. The German General Rommel, he said this, utterly fearless, full of drive and energy. He was always up front where the battle was fiercest. If his opponent made a mistake, Rommel was on it like a flash. People were, this guy, I mean, if you want to read about somebody that was furious, this guy, he was, he was that bold. I mean, he was a tank commander for the German army. Um, just an amazing leader. I mean, his ideology and everything, horrific. We pull that out of the way. You can see exactly what he accomplished and how relentless he was and the things that he did. I mean, we can, we can look at leadership and pull all the ethics and stuff and see the principles that are there, guys. I, I mean, you can look at Genghis Khan or, or, or you know, go back even farther. You can, you can look at the great things that the great leadership lessons that Jesus taught, or you can look at, uh, like I said, leadership lessons, Alexander the Great or some, or some of these others, uh, conquerors that, that came in, Julius Caesar, Cleopatra, as she was leading, all, all these different things, that, you know, not, and people are human, but there are principles that are universal that are there that show us examples. And, and uh, that's, uh, let me, I'm going to share this because I'm, I'm going to stop right now. Because uh, some people get offended when I talk like this, and, and I, I want to share something. The minute that you can look at someone and have compassion for them, but then also know that they, you can learn from them, and you may disagree with one or two things or 10 things of them, but there is something that they can teach you. We can all teach and learn each other. Learn, teach, teach, learn. You may not like Biden. You may not like Trump, but I guarantee you there's something either one of them could teach you. And that's humility, guys, to be able to look at that. You can still disagree with them because you have principles and morals, whatever side you're on, and those go against that. And you have the personal freedom to believe those things. But to have the humility enough to say, hey, this person can teach me something. I guarantee you the great generals in the world always looked at their enemies with respect. Every time. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Number seven, be aggressive and bold. Philip of Macedonia said this. I love this. This is old school. We're going super old school here. You ready? An army of deer led by a lion is more to be feared than an army of lions led by a deer. A leader must be bold and aggressive. He must be willing to have the audacity to go against the norm, whatever that norm appears to be to the deer or the sheep. It is time that we must be lions, guys. It is time. It, it, when crisis hits like it has, it requires the matching of that boldness to it. When you go into work and there's fatigue and people have been doing this for six or eight months and you don't turn around and show even more love than you've ever had. You don't turn around and show even more humility than you ever had. You go into your job and you say, as much as COVID and this fatigue, as much as negative news that these people are listening to constantly from both sides, I'm going to be the opposite of that. But I need to be bold because I got to break through all the bullshit to get people focused on the mission. How many military leaders in time of battle when people would get shell-shocked and they're watching the battle all around them and it's so loud and crazy and they've never experienced that. And, and, and an old sergeant comes in, hops in the foxhole and he's like, let's get to it, let's go. And takes them out of that thing and then they get focused right back on the mission. Guys, it requires aggressive and bold action. 
Number eight, take care of your soldiers. Major General Maxwell D. Taylor said this, the badge of rank that an officer wears on his coat is really a symbol of certitude to his men. Alexander the Great, one of his great leadership qualities was he always placed his men first. He always placed his men first. And you know what men do when they realize that? They rise up. It's the trust. And in that trust, they have this feeling of, I know he loves me. I know he cares about me. I love and care about him. My responsibility is to do everything I can, 110% to support him. When your employees think that about you, when that team, even if you're leading, maybe you work at Foot Locker and you're the assistant manager, guess what? You can fucking lead like this. Be the best fucking assistant manager at Foot Locker that's ever been. Every shoe's going to be perfectly lined up. We're going to do training every day. Every person's going to know every little detail about every single shoe. They're going to be able to, every time somebody walks in that door, they're going to be greeted. They're going to be half friendly. We're going to ask the right questions. We're going to do sales training. Every person's walking out of this store knowing and understanding and getting help the best and walking out of here with shoes. Every person will walk out of this store buying a pair of shoes if they walk in. This is my battlefield. This is what we're doing. Number nine, be a student of the past. Oh, I love reading books about the past. Napoleon said this, the only right way of learning the science of war is to read and reread the campaigns of the great captains. You have to, guys. There's so much um, wisdom that's out there. I've been reading books from the late 1800s, early 1900s here lately. And, oh, my God, it's amazing. People would, you know, they just had like candles or, or, or oil lanterns and they would just write. They didn't have all the distractions that we have now with our dopamine, serotonin pop-offs from Facebook and all this other craziness that's going on. Number 10, be decisive. President Theodore Roosevelt, once again, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing is the wrong thing. And the worst thing you can do is nothing. You cannot be a leader and not do nothing when the time. You have to be decisive. If you lack decisiveness, you can have fatal consequences in the battle. You have to stick to your decision. Never show yourself to be indecisive. I love uh, what Julius Caesar said. He said the die is cast. And he's like, I'm not going back. The die is cast. I'm dying. Here's where I'm going. I'm done. Number 11, show determination. George Patton, the great crazy general that we all love, General George S. Patton. He said, you're never beaten until you admit it. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's that never say die attitude. That even when you think that it's, it's you know, um, it's funny, uh, there was a Brigadier General, Anthony McAuliffe. Uh, he was acting commander of the 101st Airborne Division during the Battle of the Bulge in World War II. And he said in 1944 in Belgium, the Germans uh, sent a demand for his, uh, uh, for his surrender, saying that he was absolutely crazy and nuts. And so he uh, sent a response back to them and said, absolutely, I am nuts. And guess what happened? Blood, toil, tears, and sweat, and we overcame, didn't we? I love Winston Churchill. He always showed determination. The speeches, those inspiring speeches he would give during World War II. And I'm going to close in one of them um, because number 12 is be strong of character. Um, but I, 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 you know, I want this to be what we understand in being strong, be strong in character. He was giving one of his speeches, his famous speeches, Winston Churchill, the British prime minister, and he stood up in the house and he said this, I would say to this house, as I said to those who have joined this government, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. We have before us an ordeal the most grievous kind. We have before us many, many long months of struggle and of suffering. You ask, what is our aim? I can answer in one word, victory. 
Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory however long and hard the road may be. For without victory there is no survival. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and the oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, islands, whatever the cost may be. We will fight on the landing grounds. We will fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And then he said this, let us therefore brace ourselves to our duties and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say this was their finest hour. This was their finest hour. To be gentlemen, to he stood before that group, he said, we're going to have these leadership characteristics. And when we go a thousand years from now, guess what? They're going to look at us and say, these guys were leaders. These guys did it. Study leadership. Be bold. Be strong. Fight. You guys got it in you. Work on yourselves. Be who you know you ought to be. Have that army model. Follow me. And I guarantee you'll change your life. Thank you for joining us on the Albuquerque Business Podcast. And thanks, and thanks to our sponsor, RigbyDigital.com. Make sure to subscribe and share and go to AAQPodcast.com. Get show notes, resources, and links to everything we talked about today to help you navigate your journey as an entrepreneur and business owner.